everyone. Welcome to LLK number 33. This is Knit with Laura and Lola. I'm Laura Nelkin. I'm a knitwear designer. I live in upstate New York in the Finger Lakes region. And I am joined by my alter ego, Lola. Lola is a little more spicy than I am. She's quite fun. Some of you have gotten to know her pretty well over the years. I have, when I first scheduled this live, I didn't think I had anything to talk about and I suddenly have this like huge pile of things to share with you. Just to kind of set us up for the evening of hanging out together, these lives are typically anywhere from like a half hour to 45 minutes, depending on how chatty I let Lola get. There is a live chat happening in the sidebar. So if you're watching while I'm live, chat away in that chat box on the side. Know that I can see you all chatting, but I won't be responding to questions that you post in that live chat. Save those for the end and I'll ask if there's any questions and I'll look over at the chat and try to answer a few of them at the end. And if you are watching this later on, if you have any questions, about what I'm talking about, I'll be posting all of the links to everything that I share in the show notes when I'm about a half hour after I'm done going live and or ask a question in the um, comments underneath the video and I'm happy to answer them. I keep an eye on those. YouTube is very good at sending me emails and reminding me. Um, Cecilia Moore says I look tan. I looked at my comments and I shouldn't and um, I might have put a tiny bit of tanner on because I was feeling kind of pale and I want to talk about how I'm wearing sunglasses on my head and it is 7.30 at night East Coast time and I'm wearing them because I had them on all day on my head because I was outside and it was sunny out. And then I came in and I was doing my hair and I was kind of a hot mess and my I couldn't get it to like lay flat up here. It looked really bad. So I realized if I put my sunglasses on the top of my head, then you couldn't see that things were a little uneven up here. So that is like a big trick that I have. Um, I wonder if our color's a little off too, if I'm looking tan, we'll just go with that. I have not been to a tanning parlor actually ever in my life. So that's not a thing I've ever done. Um, I see people saying they use sunglasses as headband as well also. So I'm glad you guys know that. I know it's not good for your sunglasses, but I don't really care because I'm just into it tonight. Um, I always love to tell you what I'm wearing when we first start these off. And I am wearing Beta Barrel, which just released it is a cowl that is part of 2021's N Club. It was the last kit and design for 2021's N Club. That is my exclusive bigger project club. It's a club that um, when it fills up, it closes for the year. So there's just a window to sign up for it. It uses La, B La Bien Ami Helix along with some beads happening. It is knit in the round as a tube. If you want to learn more about it, there is a link that I'll give you below at the end and you can click on that. I, um, I feel like some of you have already seen Beta Barrel and I don't want to spend too much time chatting about it. And club members got an exclusive video teaching them how to knit Beta Barrel. I um, do feel like I need to tell you that signups for 2020 twos and club are open now and they'll only be open until it is full. I think probably at a later date closer to the holidays I will I'll do kind of a special log where I just kind of talk about the three different patterns that I did for 2021's end club so I'm not going to spend um, too much energy kind of for those of you who've already heard about it. I see that Kathy just said that she likes my top and that's the other thing that I wanted to tell you about. This top is called the Toaster Sweater. It is a pattern by So House 7. I love it. I've actually made a few of them now. I made my friend Debbie a few of them last year and have started making myself some. What I love about it is it has this very long cuff. It's got a mock turtleneck. It can be cropped or not cropped. There's a bunch of different versions of it. This is a knit fabric I bought at my local quilting and fabric store called Quilters Corners. I can already tell you that I know I'm going to be making a few more of these tops 
as I um, get into the winter time. I saw some really lovely organic fleece. You guys know that I sew as well as I knit and sewing is kind of like my crafting break. Haven't had a lot of time for it right now, um, but I do have one project to show you in a tiny bit that I did um, with my new sewing machine, which was very fun. If you see me glancing around, it's because I do have notes so I don't get completely off track with what I'm telling you about. October is Cowltober in my Ravelry group. When you say that out loud, it sounds a little goofier than it is in real life. Um, so Cowltober, we are knitting cowls from anybody, from myself, from any other knitwear designer in my Ravelry group. There's a thread, there's been Yarny prizes every week. It ends um, on the 31st, so there's still time to join in and knit a cowl with us. You don't even actually have to finish a cowl to win the grand prize at the end, which I have not announced yet. So please do join right in. All of my cowl patterns, of which there are like 40 or 40 plus patterns, are all buy one get one free for the month of October. So um, I'll link to those as well if you haven't already stocked up on all of my cowl patterns so far. This is maybe the fifth or sixth year of Cowltober and I wear cowls a lot in the winter. What I like about them is they don't kind of like shift around like a scarf will. If you're cold, you can wrap them twice around your neck. If you're warmer, you can just kind of open it up. You can put it around your shoulders if you need to. Um, I'm very excited to ski in my beta cowl this winter, which everybody in the end club already heard about how excited I am. I see that some people are knitting on their cowls while they're listening to me to talk, which I totally love. I love the community aspect of doing lives because you really are all getting to kind of interact with what I'm chatting about while I'm telling you all the things that I have to tell you. So we're gonna see if this works right now. I wanted to share my hike with you today. I, um, many of you know that I live near Taganic Falls in Trumansburg, New York. Taganic Falls is the highest waterfall east of the Mississippi. And yesterday we had a huge amount of rain on the East Coast. I know we didn't get as much as some people did on the East Coast, but our road actually flooded over our country road. We have a, a culvert that gets kind of full at this time of year and it, um, there was water going over the road and I heard my neighbors last night in their gator totally driving back through and through the water. I think they were soaking wet by the end of it. But my friend Stephanie and I took her dogs and went to Deganic today and I shot a little video for you to show you the falls in all of their raging splendor today. Wow, right? That's a lot of water. Um, for the last log, I had asked you guys to leave comments and tell me what you would like to see more of. And we had done some state of the falls in the spring and early summer. And I saw that a few people said that they missed seeing the falls in my log. So we just figured out a way to do them a little more easily in lives with a little less editing effort. So I hope you enjoy just a little splash of my home. It's always, I hike to Gannick three, four times a week and I absolutely never tire of it. Like I lo woke up this morning and all I wanted to do was figure out when I was going to get to Taganic today. And I'm very glad that we made it there. And my friend Stephanie has two dogs, so I always get to walk one of them. It's like having a rented dog. Both her dogs, I adore them. They love me. It's very fun to get to just have a moment and take a break from the computer screen. So I hope you enjoyed that. 
And those of you coming to Knit Ithaca, I believe that we will be going to Taganic when you're here. I have a little hope if Treeman State Park is still open, which it's never been open when Knit Ithaca has happened in November. Um, we haven't been able to go there before, but I kind of have a hope that if it is open, I might actually switch and take us to Treeman because if you haven't been to Treeman State Park, it's an absolutely magical gorge. And normally by November, it's closed because of ice, but we have not even frosted yet here. I picked poblanos and eggplants out of my garden the last week of October, which if I stop and really think about it, it's actually kind of scary because we really should have had a frost by now. It's, it's pretty, um, it's a different year already to be sure. So that was Taganic. That's your little state of the falls. I know I love to share with you guys kind of what I'm reading and what I am watching. Last log, I did a read aloud with you guys. That was a tiny bit spicy. It had to do with some gourds. I know some of you really appreciated it. I'm sure a few people didn't enjoy it as much. I don't have a read aloud for you this time. I won't always have a read aloud, but I did just get a book in the mail that turns out to be a little spicier than I was hoping it was going to be. So I need to read through it and find a, a clip that feels appropriate for for reading aloud. I don't want YouTube to ban me for being completely inappropriate. So I have to read through that a little bit and find the right spot, but it's got a pretty funny backstory to it. In terms of other stuff that I am reading, I'm actually listening to a book that I just found out about on NPR over the weekend called Crying in H Mart. And that is by Michelle Zahner. I have everything written down right here. And it's absolutely stunning. It normally takes me a little while to kind of get into a book on tape and then really have it be the only thing that I want to do. But I had a lot of shipping to do for Beatic Mitt kits because y'all just completely cleared out my Etsy shop of those over the weekend. And I downloaded the book and I have just been going deep into reading it. It is a memoir written by a young woman about her mom dying of cancer and their connection to each other through Korean food. It's very well written. It's poignant. It's, um, she, I believe she reads it, the audiobook that I'm listening to, and I would highly suggest it. If you like food, if you um, want to explore relationships with mothers, I'm not always the best at these like synopsis, but I think you get an idea that it's I'm I'm really enjoying it and I'm looking forward to when I get my shipping break tomorrow and I get that's what I listen to audiobooks when I'm working in the studio and shipping and it's really it's a it's a great break to the day. I absolutely adore it. In terms of reading, I just finished It Ends With Us by Colleen Hoover. That um, book has a little bit of a trigger warning. It is about relationship abuse and um, a very kind of strong, um, a, a violent relationship that's almost like systemic. Like it's, it's um, I'm not, I lost my words entirely. It, um, it was good and I read the whole book, but uh, it's, it's not going to be for everybody that book. It might trigger some of you. Um, I then also last night finished The Last Thing He Told Me, which is a mystery slash like family drama that I absolutely devoured. I actually kind of lost sleep a few nights while I read through that. That is by Laura Dave. And then I have queued up a book, Beautiful World, Where Are You? by Sally Rooney. Sally Rooney is an Irish author. She wrote Normal People. A friend of mine that I've been working on a big mosaic project with suggested Sally Rooney's books to me. So I have that ready to read tonight when I go to bed. I'm pretty excited for my, for my new night reading. I love having something kind of queued up that's the next thing to dive into. In terms of watching things, I have been watching a lot and so much that I've kind of stopped watching a few things so that I could have a few episodes to watch at the same time because I really like to binge things. So I watched the first four or five episodes of Only Murders in the Building and absolutely loved it and I kind of stopped watching it and I think I have the rest of the show to watch now. So that is queued up to watch the rest of that. I did just finish The Maid, and if you have not seen The Maid, it's on Netflix. That is a um, 
really poignant and powerfully shot uh, story about a young mother who leaves her husband who's abusive and has to try to figure out how to make it within the system and build a life for her daughter and herself and really like pull herself up by the bootstraps. There's so many times in The Maid where I'm like, no, don't do that. And I want her to like stop and make a different decision. And then, um, and then in the end, she, she really pulls herself together. It's very well done and I would highly suggest The Maid. And finally, I have been watching The Great British Bake Off, and I believe it's on series 12. And for those of you who know me, you know I like sweets, and I do eat some sweets, but I really love a good, good savory bake. I love a good savory bake. And so a few weeks ago was Bread Week, and they made these amazing, their challenge was to make bread sticks, and they had to follow a recipe from Paul, and I, um, I think it's Paul Hollywood is his name, and they had green olives in them, and manchego in them, and parsley, or cilantro, and, and red onion. And so last night I decided to make them, and I do have a photo to show you guys my bread sticks so that you can see what those breadsticks look like. I don't think I would win any awards on Great British Bake Off because I don't think that my breadsticks are the same size. I don't believe, they're quite rustic, which they were supposed to be. You can see their rustic quality. They um, had olives just popping out the side. I call that olive porn, because I love porn. That was so such a bad joke. I'm so sorry about that. They had like pieces of manchego cheese just like falling out the side and oozing and they were so good and I think they were done by like 9 30 or 10 last night which is pretty classic for Lola when she decides to bake. So I went to bed with a stomach just like full of breadstick and I don't think I slept as well as I have slept in the past <laughs> because having a full stomach with breadsticks, but they were great and heated up. They're good. I had them with eggs this morning. I did put some in the freezer. I'll give you guys the link to that recipe because they were superb. Um, in terms of sewing, the only sewing that I've done since the last time we did a log is, I don't think I've showed this anywhere at all because I didn't quite finish it yet. I'm gonna put my hand over it. Is at Quilters Corners, which is our local quilting store in Ithaca. I took a class on making a hexi pot holder. I've really missed taking classes as I think we all have. And I think it's very important as a teacher to go be a student. I think partially because it helps me see like even the materials you get ahead of time, like what is helpful and what is frustrating. How does a class format work, right? I've not taken any sewing classes before and I also have never quilted before. So part of why I wanted to make this hexi um, pot holder was to start to learn some quilting techniques. The class turned out to be amazing. It was like a two or three hour class and I finished it all except for I need to top stitch all the way around the outside of it, which will kind of cover up this spot right here where I turned it inside out. I used fabric from the masks that were made from the end club last year. So I got to do a little bit of like fussy cutting, like understanding the concept of fussy cutting, like wanting to get the butterfly right into the center. It's got some lovely chickens. All these fabrics were just like from stash, from making masks and other projects over the years. And um, I don't know if you know this, but when I retire one day, I'm totally gonna make quilts. I've been like really putting it off because I can tell that quilts are a rabbit hole. I have a few friends that are quilters and I know I will get so into it one day when I do decide to quilt. Um, but I do think at some point, maybe even this winter, I'm gonna sign up for just a basic quilting class because I think the sewing techniques that quilters use are would really apply well to my garment sewing and I could just use some kind of refresher like I've I learned how to sew in college I sew a lot but I've not done a lot of learning and I really love learning with people in a group and I, I miss it as I'm sure you all do. So I see people saying that they'll teach me how to quilt because I know a lot of you were quilters and then you found me and now you're a knitter, right? But so yeah, Hexi is super fun, potholder. 
This, these would make great gifts. I do think I'll make a few of these for people. Like my mom in Florida doesn't need a lot of woolly knitwear from me, right? But everybody uses a pot holder. So Susie says scan quarter inch scenes. Um, so that is sewing that I'm up to right now, which means if I've covered all of that, it is time to talk about knitting and what is going on with knitting. I'm sure that you can see the whole time that we've been talking, except when I'm picking something up, I'm knitting. And I finally got Max's sweater to the point where I can just knit in the round while I'm talking to you. Most of the knitting that I've had lately hasn't been really easy um, for me to not have to look at while I'm working on it. It's been more intricate stitch patterns. So just as a reminder, I showed you guys this this summer. It is a sweater by Kirsten K Kapoor. I'll give you guys the link in the show notes. It's worked from the top down. I finished all the color work. I split for the arms and now I get to work the body for like 15 inches of going around and around. I'm working in Harrisville nightshades. The top of the color work is spin cycle yarn. I think it's two or three logs back where I talk about this sweater in more detail. But that's what's on my needles and you'll probably, I think until the holidays, see me knitting on this when I'm chatting with you because it's a really good project to kind of leave for stuff like this when I can't have my attention split to my knitting. In terms of what's come out lately, since it's been a little while since I did one of these, the Kairos project came out and there is a cowl and a shawl in the Kairos project. I actually really love the Kairos cowl with this sweater. So I'm just gonna kind of switch out cowls while I am chatting with you. And um, it's like a whole new person hanging out with you. I love gray and yellow together. These are knit in Emma's yarn. I do have kits in my shop. I sold out of kits and new kits just came back in. So if there was a color that you were looking for, I do have all four colors back in stock. I am not going to go too deep into the construction of the Kairos cowl and the Kairos shawl here. I do have the shawl here because there is about a 40 minute video on my channel that goes through the construction of both of them. It goes deep into tips and tricks. We've got the overhead camera going so that you, I can show you different things, how to work with the beads, how to do the cast ons, etc. So if you're interested in learning more, I'll just give you those links and go check out the Kairos cowl. The other thing that released this week is beaded mitts. It's been busy around here. Fall is like knitting season, basically. Fall is when we knit and I dive deep into it with you all. I see that Dale says she missed the notification. I was going live. Dale, you'll be able to rewatch later. So these are always here to watch. You can start watching now and then just watch the beginning part later. It's always there for you. You didn't miss it. Don't worry. Um, you need the pink, Bonnie. Sorry, I'm reading the comments and I said I wasn't going to read the comments. So in terms of other knitting, uh, Take Me Away released for Cowltober. And I think this is a kind of fun process thing I can talk to you right now. Take Me Away was a cowl for 2020's N Club. There is a smaller tube shape cowl and then there is a wider one for wearing around your shoulders or wrapping twice around your neck. It is knit with two colors of Essence of Autumn Prairie Lace, which is a 100% superwash merino lace weight yarn. Cheryl from, she's from Canada. She dyes yarn that is so beautiful that my photographer yesterday, she just sent me new yarn for kits for Take Me Away. My photographer, Jamie, was taking photos yesterday and she seriously was like, is there an award for people who dye the prettiest yarn? Because if there's an award, this woman, she just called her Essence of Autumn because she didn't know her name was Cheryl. She was like, this woman needs to win that award. These are so good. So there's going to be five different colors coming out in kits. Right now, I am working on 
a scarf version of Take Me Away. So I'm going to start the scarf where it's worked flat and it's just one section of one color together and then it's gonna transition into that middle stitch and then the other end is going to be just the one color and lace weight. So it'll be like a long narrow scarf that kind of shifts in color from one end to the other. I do have somebody lined up to knit that for me. For those of you who know me, I love wearing scarves, but they're not always my favorite thing to knit. I kind of prefer knitting in the round more than I do knitting flat like that. So my friend Marguerite offered to um, knit it for me. She's a great sample knitter. And I'm just working on swatching out the stitches flat because as always, there's going to be some things that will change going from working in the round to working flat. Like one, I need to think about edge stitches right I need to balance it out so there's edge stitches on both sides um, then both of these stitches both the the beginning stitch and the middle stitch not so much the end stitch needed to be changed because I've got right side rows and wrong side rows so when you work something in the round if you only have if you have an odd number of rounds it doesn't matter because your yarn always ends up at the beginning of the round but if you're working something flat you kind of need to have an even number of rounds if you're working particularly with two colors because you need your yarn to end up on the correct edge of your work to be carrying up that yarn I hope that makes sense to you guys I just went like yada 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 books reading whatever and then I got all like technical for a second so I am just working out these stitches and then I need to do a little math to make sure that it ends up being the width that I want it to be basically like your width and your length are going to be connected sorry the cat is like attacking Max behind the camera <laughs> so funny um got a little distracted there. So basically your width and your length are connected, right? So I have to figure out what's the widest I could make it to still have it be the length that I want it. And that is going to be a bit of math. I've got a spreadsheet kind of half figured out and I will finish that. Marguerite is a really fast knitter. So probably if I tried to knit it, I'd be done in December with the scarf, but I have a feeling she'll have it done much more quickly than that. I'm not gonna wait to release the kits. I'll release them sooner. The kit will end up working for the scarf or the cowl, um, but the, only the cowl will be available when the kits come out. And we already have photos of the kits. I think what I decided to do is to release the kits first to everybody at Knit Ithaca. So I'm gonna like bring a selection of those to Knit Ithaca. And then after Knit Ithaca is over and I come home and I have a second to breathe, I will put everything else in the shop all at once. So I'm gonna kind of like temper that out. I saw somebody asked about sweaters and kind of I'll ask for questions later. I get really distracted if I start reading comments. So I'm trying not to, but I see other people answering in there and that is really helpful. In terms of other yarn, some of you got to go to Rhinebeck this year. Many of us did not get to go to Rhinebeck this year. I did do a trade with my friend at the Lemonade Yarn Shop. I love Superwash DK weight yarn. I like knitting hats out of it. I like knitting bralettes. Bella, my daughter, really loves when I knit her bralettes out of Superwash DK yarn. She wears them like underneath flannels and layers them in the winter time. And this was Lemonade Yarn Shop's Rhinebeck color. It's just like so lively and fun. And I'm going to save it for this winter when I have a down day because I will not have a down day after knitting with this absolutely like glorious, lively color. Um, I, have a, I have a huge bin of Superwash DK weight yarn. It's kind of surprising that I don't have any patterns that use Superwash DK and I think that's gonna have to be remedied soon. I really tend to trend with my designs towards, I've got some sweaters that use Superwash DK, like Gola uses Superwash DK as I'm like thinking about it and talking to you. Um, but I really trend towards sport lace and fingering partially because that's what you can put beads on to. And there's definitely hard to put beads on DK weight yarn. So I know there's a reason I don't end up designing with it, but I really love it. So I have quite the collection of it over time. I bet some of you also have a collection of Superwash DK weight yarn. 
Trying to think of what other yarn I have. I'll talk about the giveaway yarn that we used for last time right towards the end before we do the next giveaway. I really teased you guys a lot in terms of like, I'm always trying to tell you what I'm gonna be talking about in these logs. So you come join me and watch with me and learn from me. And I teased that I wanted to start talking more about design inspiration with you. And I feel like I just did that a little bit with Take Me Away, like how I'm gonna take something in the round and work it out to make it flat. But I want, or let me say that again, Lola really wants to tease you about what is coming for the November Lola's Choice Kit. I am not showing you the design right now. I'm just showing you a few inspiration photos and then telling you kind of how I'm taking that or Lola's taking that and running with it. For those of you who don't know what Lola's Choice is, Lola's Choice is my small knitted kit club. So whereas the end club is bigger projects, bigger skeins of yarn, takes me longer to design them, takes you longer to knit them. It's much more of a, like an experience joining that club. Lola's Choice ships every other month, so there's six kits a year. It's small projects, you can get them done pretty quickly, sometimes in a night, sometimes in a week, kind of depends how quickly you knit, but they're not huge projects, they're accessible, and I'm always teaching something. So I wanna make sure that my, um, my person behind the scenes is ready to show this photo. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that was me queuing somebody up right there. So I found this stitch pattern on Instagram and we're gonna put it up so that you guys can see the stitch. And it is knit by a Turkish designer. I know I'm not gonna say her name correctly, but her name is Cancelin Orgu Dunyansi. And you can see that it has stitches where she's like reaching below into yarn overs and pulling up stitches. I've certainly done stitches somewhat similar to this before, but never with this kind of like cabled lace detail that is happening in this stitch. So I found it on Instagram a few years ago now, and I saved it. Like, I don't know if you guys have found that when you use Instagram, you can save things that you like and then find them later. So I saved it and I would kept coming back to it and coming back to it, and I would look at it and look at it. And that stitch was my inspiration for the stitch that gets used in Lola's Choice. What's very funny is the stitch that I end up using is not that similar to that stitch. It doesn't have that cool little coin ribbing coming up it. It is not quite as dense and graphic. Um, I kind of just kept looking at the picture and trying to develop my own stitch for it and then looking at that picture and developing my own stitch because I didn't want to like use somebody else's stitch, right? I want to come up with my own stitch. But when I was researching it for this for you guys and I was finding the name so I could like find her Instagram account, I found out that she also has a YouTube channel that, wait for it, I've got like, I don't know, seven and a half thousand followers, subscribers on YouTube and I'm not complaining, right? That's great, I adore you guys. She's got half a million followers on YouTube. So I did a quick search and I actually found the stitch, like a tutorial for doing this stitch on YouTube. And so I'll give you guys the link to that below so you can watch her. She does, it is in Turkish. So you can do subtitles in English and follow along with her. And I haven't watched the whole thing yet. I just found it like two or three hours ago. But I'm pretty excited. Um, she has tutorials for all these different stitches. They're really intriguing. I wonder kind of if she has a stitch dictionary because I, I mean, I have a huge collection of stitch dictionaries. I just have been getting a little tired of all of them. So it's kind of fun to find a new resource to gain inspiration from. And even with the stitch dictionary, I change things and make them my own. So I'm just kind of like doing that, but in a new way. And I'm kind of glad I didn't find her YouTube on how to do that stitch because I really made it my own and it, it's much more like inspired by than, um, than taking somebody else's stitch and using it for myself. The second thing that I um, was inspired by for this next kit, I, I, is my guy all locked and loaded and ready to go? Give me some Nomi Max. Okay, so here's your Shalom Gnome. 
he is also my inspiration. <laughs> Sorry, totally Lola's inspiration for the November Lola's Choice kit. I did not know that gnomes are a thing. Like I didn't, I mean, I've seen that people have been knitting gnomes over the years and like people have like collect gnomes and I know about a garden gnome for sure. But last year somehow gnomes like really became in the forefront. And right around the holiday times, I was like, you guys, is there a Hanukkah gnome? And we found Shalom gnome and he's amazing. And someone called him like Gnome Chomsky, which I absolutely crack up about again and again. And then Lois, who is one of our moderators on Ravelry and um, helps me out with test knitting for Lola's Choice, knit me a little Hanukkah gnome, which who I totally call Gnome Chomsky. And he's been hanging out in my studio and we use him as our like focal point. Like I've caught Max kind of like putting him up on something so he can pretend that he's me to like get focus and make sure, cause you can really see with the stitches if everything's in focus and looking good. I'm just holding up Gnome Chomsky right in front of me. So he hangs out in the video studio with us. Sometimes he's like sitting back here with Mr. Owl and um, so now you guys are gonna get to see him more cause he's around. So Lola was also inspired by gnomes for the November Lola's Choice kit. And I, 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 I wanna tell you more, it's good. I can't wait for these kits to land. I, um, I know you guys all know about gnomes. I, they're, they're, they're fun little, little guys for sure. And we'll be chatting about them a little more. I'm going to tell you, you are not knitting a gnome for Lola's Choice. I feel like, did you see how I just got very serious? Like a parent, mom, Lola, we are not knitting a gnome. Lola is not a gnome designer. <laughs> not going to happen. Just inspired by gnomes a little bit. So the Lola's Choice kit is actually going to ship on November 8th. So um, what I say about Lola's Choice is that kits will ship by the 10th of the month. So I'm within my legal window for shipping that kit. And the reason I'm not shipping it sooner is because Knit Ithaca is the 5th through the 7th. So if I shipped out the kits on November 1st, they would land right as I was greeting everybody for Knit Ithaca. And I don't want my attention split. I just really want to enjoy that weekend and make sure all of my focus goes there. And then everybody will go home and I'll have all the kits are actually all ready to go. We'll put the labels on them and take them to the post office. So that is is the reasoning for November 8th. I can pretty much come up with a reason or an excuse for anything. If you give me enough time, I can develop the, the why behind we're doing what we're doing. I'll have like seven reasons why it's the right thing to do. I was a joy as a teenager, <laughs> an absolute joy. I, I totally promise you, <laughs> I was a handful. So that is Lola's Choice inspiration and just some little teasing. I think you guys are really going to enjoy this kit. I cannot wait for it to land. Looking at what we have left, I've teased you about Lola. I'm going to tell you the winner from last week's log and then I'm going to give you your cue for a winner for the next time I do a log and then we're going to say goodnight because we're exactly at the 40 minute mark so we're right around where I say it is time to wrap things up and I'm going to go eat a breadstick right so last week's giveaway was this skein of fully spun yarn from Brooke at Fully Spun and I told you about how she's doing a Kickstarter to be able to start making marled yarn like this again, hand dyed marled yarn. It's a fingering weight sock yarn. She's really the only person I know that does a fingering weight marled sock yarn with nylon and she Got the Kickstarter fully funded. I think she's raised almost $39,000. Her goal was 30. Unfortunately, about a week after she launched the Kickstarter, she um, fell and hit her head and she has a concussion. And I know that she's just off screen time right now while she's healing, but that project is up and running and good to go. And I'm so excited for her. And the winner of the skein is Karen Hager. So Karen, get in touch with me. I will try to link to you below. If she's watching, somebody could maybe tag her so that she hears that she won the fully spun skein of sock yarn. This is a coveted skein of yarn because this is a one of a kind skein from 
back when Brooke used to do these and work with a different mill. So that's last week's winner. This week's winner, your prompt is, what do you think Lola has in store for us? Like, what do you guys think Lola designed? Do not leave that comment in the live chat. You need to leave your comment to win the prize by leaving that in the information below. Your prize is going to be amazing. I'm not even going to tell you what your prize is. It's so good because if I tell you, then the people at Knit Ithaca will have something that is for them be spoiled. So um, particularly for people who aren't making it to Knit Ithaca, this is something for you guys as a little special thing. I've tried not to talk too much about Knit Ithaca because I don't, I don't want to make anybody feel bad who can't make it this year. I understand it's not in the cards for everybody. It is an odd year and we're just getting back to things as we can. I am very much looking forward to it and so your prize is going to be something super special from Knit Ithaca that you will see at a later date at the next live session that we have together. What I really love about doing these lives is we have pre-recorded high quality tutorials for patterns as patterns are released. Those are either linked in my patterns or they I publish them on YouTube and you can see them in my channel. These are more like me in the moment with you guys telling you what's going on. Just sharing things and being a little spazzy. So there's a real difference between lives and my tutorials. I do hope you check out my tutorials as well. The next live is going to be November 17th at 7.30 p.m. Eastern time. The reason that it's not November 10th is that is my 20th wedding anniversary and that would be rude for me to have a live on that night. So we're gonna go out to eat that night and November 17th is our next live. Put it in your calendars. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Give it a thumbs up. Tell your friends about it. I really appreciate you supporting me and letting me live this crazy creative life that I still can't believe I get to do because you are all there with me. I said all that. I haven't asked if you guys have any questions. So I'm just going to look below. If anybody has a question, Slap it in the comments in the next minute. I completely forgot about that. Remember, these are live. I get to be a spaz. I'll say goodbye again. I think my friend who's Irish calls it the Irish goodbye when you're like, I can't say goodbye. I like you guys too much. <laughs> I am um, not seeing any questions. So I'm just giving it another second because I know there's sometimes there's a lag from me chatting and me seeing your comments. Thank you so much for your happy anniversary wishes. Um, maybe I'll convince Max to let me take a picture of us for our anniversary. You never know if that happens. Maybe I'll just have to use the picture of us both wearing the slippers I knit us last year. Um, I am not seeing any questions, which is great. So I'm going to say good night to you guys. Everybody have a pleasant rest of your Wednesday. Have a great rest of the week. And thank you so much. Have a good night. Don't forget to subscribe if you aren't. That's the best way to keep in touch.